Hey viewers, welcome to VL Astrology once again. I'm Manita Lenka, I'm a Vedic Astrologer, and I'm going to be talking about marriage. Uh, this is a series that I started um, with the love marriage. And what exactly is uh, the timing people are asking me? So I'm going to be discussing that in this video. I'll be taking up the uh, compatibility also in the forthcoming videos. So here, what is happening when you have to see marriage, you have to see second house, fifth house, seventh house, ninth house, eleventh house, twelfth house. These are the houses for marriage. They all are very important. They all are very uh, essential to be get married. Venus is a, is a planet of happiness. So we have to see Venus as well. For a female horoscope, we have to see the condition of Mars. People say Jupiter as well, but Jupiter actually earlier times used to be a guru. You know, we used to see uh, the husband in the form of a guru, a preacher, a teacher. That's why guru used to be the, the Jupiter used to be uh, important for getting married in a female's horoscope. But nowadays it's Mars because Mars uh, is passion and uh, it is vitality. What is the energy level of the person? So Mars is very important in a female horoscope. Mars is the Mangalya also. So we have to see in a female horoscope, Mars and in a male's horoscope, Venus's condition. And overall, we should see in both the charts, Venus's condition and Jupiter's condition for the happiness question in the horoscope. The affliction can be caused by Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu, even Surya causes affliction. Moon, as, moon and Venus combination brings about marriage, definitely marriage. Mercury behaves uh, wherever he sits, he behaves that way. He's a dual, dual planet and he's influenced by the planet he sits with or the sign he sits in. Now here, we have to also see the Deshkal Patra first. Some people, you know, get married very early for some 40 years of age is also not early. It's right kind of age to get married. So that is why the Desh Kala Patra, okay, these three things are very important. Uh, this basically is where you are from, which community, where, which country. So it depends. Then comes the Quality of marriage. Quality of marriage, we have to see how much affliction is there in the seventh house zone. What kind of planets are looking at the seventh house zone? Seventh house is our outside world. It is the opposite to first house. The first house is the engine and seventh house is the opposite, right opposite, 180 degrees. Fifth house, as I said in my first video, we have to see for the romance, the love in our life. That is also very essential. Then we have to see the fulfillment of desire from the 11th house. Sanity in marriage, whether it is going to be a love marriage, which is given sanity by other people or your family members. So we have to see the condition of the ninth house. If the planets are forming a lot of affliction in the seventh house zone, if seventh house is in a hemmed between Malefic, Saturn on one side, Rahu on the other, or the Lagna, as a matter of fact, is hemmed between Malefic, Ketu, Mars, Rahu on either sides. So that is also forming an affliction. A combust planet, the lord of the Lagna, suppose it's Mercury, the Lagnesh is combust. Jupiter, Venus, Mars is conjunct with Sun, is combust. Being the Lord of the Seventh, if Sun is the Lord of the Seventh, is in Rahu Ketu axis, it's a problematic marriage. At times, it's said that the marriage doesn't happen at all. Now, if there is affliction in the Seventh House, and there is a benefic influence as well, the marriage will definitely take place. And if it is Jupiter who's looking at this zone, from the 11th house, third house, first house. These are the three places where Jupiter will be looking at the seventh house. So de definitely it will give you a good marriage. It will save the marriage. But if there is no grace, if Venus, Jupiter are not looking at the zone, then the problem is there that the if there's only affliction, marriage might not even take place. So these are very important factors you must know to understand 
whether the marriage is going to take place or not. The quality of marriage also can be read by these factors. More the affliction, more the problem in the marriage. Divorce, sixth house comes to play. Mars, looking at the sixth house and influencing the sixth house lord is also causing some kind of litigation, separation. That is very essential to see. Seventh lord going to the sixth from itself, that is in the twelfth house or the second house. Suppose the seventh lord is uh, Venus and seated in the 12th house. The affliction is not that much, but still it is forming some in affliction. There's a lot of passion in, or if it is going to the second house or any, any Lord, Lord of the se seventh going to the sixth or the eighth from itself, that is in the 12th house or the second house will give some kind of problem in the marriage or it will be a break in the marriage. So these are the factors which you should consider before taking up or moving ahead as to what is the timing of the marriage. If there is a basic promise lacking in the chart of getting married, then why we should be going to the timing? There are people who don't get married the whole life. They're single the whole lifetime, you know. Especially Ketu gives us suddenness. If Ketu sits in the fifth house, as I said in my first video or previous video also, Ketu gives breaks. Definitely. Foreign partner, we have to see the connection of the seventh house lord with the ninth house or the twelfth house. Planets could be Saturn, Rahu, or the lord going to the twelfth will also give you some kind of foreign partner. So if the seventh lord is going to the twelfth house, that can also be the case. There will be problem in the marriage, but if you marry some overseas partner from the overseas, the marriage will be better. That can also be considered. Now coming to the factors which are involved to time the marriage. Now the marriage is there. When is the marriage? Suppose it is you are a Sarasati born. It said that when the first Sarasati finishes, only then the marriage should take place or it takes place after the first Sarasati completes. The first round of Saturn, that's a Saturn return. Suppose you are born in the Capricorn rising as now Saturn is transiting there and you're born also in uh, Saturn was in Capricorn and so was moon in either uh, your Sagittarius or was in Aquarius or in Capricorn itself, uh, moon was there as well. So in these three signs, when moon was along with Saturn forming a Sarasati, so it said that the first Sarasati, when it touches or it, the Saturn return is over, then the period starts to get married. Or there is one break before that, and then the marriage actually happens. Now, there is another factor that is Jupiter. Jupiter is very essential to check when marriage will take place. Suppose Jupiter is transiting over your seventh lord or is transiting through the 11th house of yours or the first house or the third house of yours. It will be aspecting the seventh house from these zones. So the marriage can take place at that time as well. Then you have to see if Jupiter is transiting through the Venus. If it is in the trine to Venus also, then also the marriage can take place. Now comes provided the Dasha. Suppose you're having a Dasha of the eighth house Lord, or you're having a Dasha where it's the 10th house Lord, the Lagnatius Dasha, then the, the, the chances are that you will your marriage is not going to happen in that Dasha. Even the sixth house Lord Dasha is not considered to be good for marriage because it's the 12th from the 7th. If it is 10th, so it is the 12th from the 11th. If it is a first, so it is because from the second, Lagna is the, the ascendant is the 12th from second. Second is very essential, you know, it's the uh, family. It's, it's uh, the addition to the family member, the family. So that is why it is very important to see the second house as well. Now, after this, 
you have to see uh, the dasha of seventh house, seventh lord, fifth house, fifth lord, moon. If it is dasha of moon, it's said that you get married. So these are certain factors that you have to consider. Then you have to consider the D9 chart after this. How is the condition of Venus in D9? Is it afflicted there? Is it conjunct Mars? Is it conjunct Rahu? Uh, so I superimpose, as you all know, I bring the D9 chart in the D1 and I superimpose it. And then I see whether uh, the condition of the planets is improving or is it uh, showing the marriage or not. Because at times, you know, there is a lot of affliction in D1, but in D9, the planets are improving. So the marriage does take place. So everybody has a personal chart. Everybody has uh, the placement of the planets in a different manner. The setup is totally different. The lagna is different. The moon is different. Uh, so what exactly... Uh, how do we know that, you know, in my personal chart, how is the marriage quality like? So these are certain factors, general factors to check whether your marriage quality is good or not. Uh, when is it going to take place? That is the first and the foremost, actually. The, the marriage is going to take place. When is it going to take place? Quality of marriage, spouse, from which direction? These are the factors we can judge from the personal chart. So more the malefic influence, the planets actually spoil the significations of that particular zone. If they are looking at that zone, suppose Saturn is seated in the fifth house, it is going to be aspecting the seventh house. So it is going to delay. Definitely it's going to delay. But in the D9, suppose Saturn is uh, you know, not forming that affliction or Jupiter is forming a connectivity or Venus is forming a connectivity with Moon. Uh, in the seventh house, if you superimpose so definitely the marriage is going to be on time. It, it has happened. I have so many charts where, you know, people have gotten married, even if there is Saturn influence. Saturn in the seventh house brings uh, a, a matured spouse. All that I will be covering in the uh, videos that will be coming your way. Uh, this is all by experience I'm talking. You get the experience by seeing several charts. So if you really want to know why the breakup took place, whether that person is coming back to my life or not, whether this uh, after this break, I'm going to get into any kind of relationship again ever or not. So all these factors, I can tell you by seeing your chart. So do book a reading. I'm running the festive dis discounts, as you all know. You can seek advice from any astrologer of your choice. It's really worth it because you must know the uh, path, the path, how your life is going to be in future so that you know if it is not that great a marriage what's the point in being in that marriage and if you know this marriage can be saved why go in for a divorce or a separation on the second place right so uh, stay connected stay tuned i'll be sharing more updates on these uh, videos i'll be sharing more videos uh, on compatibility also for each lagna for each ascendant so stay tuned everyone stay blessed om tat sat